and welcome to Coffee with Crane. I'm Joseph Patrick. This is a podcast series where I meet with industry professionals and chat about what's going on in the world of logistics. Please subscribe to Coffee with Crane on your favorite podcast player. And when you do, be sure to like, share, and comment. It really does help. Now, in this episode, we'll be speaking with Crane Worldwide Logistics Managing Director of South Pacific and Indonesia, Peter O'Brien. Welcome to Coffee with Crane, Peter. Thanks, Joseph. Good to see you. Well, let's uh, get to know you a little bit better. Uh, first, uh, tell us something about yourself that most people don't know. Uh, well, I've been involved in coaching junior football, so AFL football and junior cricket for the last 12 years. Um, I have a real passion for helping develop not only good sports people, but good people in general. Um, I feel sport teaches young people discipline, respect and people skills. At Crane Worldwide Australia, we, we've got two young cricketers that have, have now work for the company and you can see that their approach to their work is very similar to the way they approach their sport. And we've got two great employees that have come on board. So, yeah, really involved in that and love, love coaching uh, young people. Well, it's a noble endeavour for sure. Now, how long have you been with Crane, Peter? Um, I've been with the company for 12 years. Um, basically, um, I started one year after the company opened globally. Um, I had to sit out for a period of time before setting up the Australian business. Um, but I've been with the company ever since and, um, you know, watched us grow and, and loved every minute of it, um, seeing our development. It's fun to watch a company grow and everybody grow along with it. Yeah, terrific. You know, you know, Australia is a very, very rich country. It's got all kinds of, you know, resources and industries. What are the top industries in Australia, do you think? Uh, so, yeah, as you just said, we're very rich in resources. So mining and the energy markets are, are very strong industries for us. Um, you know, also with the weather we have down here, agricultural industry is very strong. Um, and, you know, we're now seeing that the solar industry is starting to develop a lot as well. That makes a lot of sense. I also understand there's a big opal industry there. My wife uh, told me about how beautiful yeah. opals from Australia are. Yeah, you, you are right. You are right. We're very, very rich in all those resources. So when you get to our top exports, uh, iron ore is a, a big one for us and, and oil and gas, um, coal mining and, and uh, natural gas and so forth. But then you go to the gold and opals and, and other metals like nickel and, and so forth. So, um, you know, we're also do you know we've got great cattle um, so meat processing is very very big for us and uh, and obviously we grow our own grain and we send a lot of the grain overseas as well yeah size wise so we're, we're probably the same size as the states uh, pretty much but uh, most of the population live around the coast so we've got a lot of uh, a lot of land in the middle where a lot of people don't live or or the popular a lot of the population don't live so with all of these resources uh, at your disposal, uh, what countries uh, trade the most with Australia? Well, so for, from exports, um, China, Japan, Korea, um, okay. India and, and the United States are our, our biggest trading partners. Um, a lot of that uh, with China, Japan and Korea and India is more the iron ore. Uh, we do a lot of gas with those countries and, and obviously we have a... You know, we have a link with the United States that we've always had over the years. Um, Import-wise, uh, China, United States, Japan, Germany and Thailand are our main importing countries and we, we definitely um, import more than we export and a lot of our export products are probably non-forwardable products where it's iron ore and gold and different things like that that are moved differently but um, you know we're obviously those companies that that do that sort of work are, are, are major businesses for importation and exports. And so you're the managing director for South Pacific and in Indonesia. Uh, what countries does that, that region cover? So, so Australia, um, New Zealand, uh, Papua New Guinea and Indonesia are, are, are the region that I look after. Um, we get involved in East Timor as well. Um, right now we've got a... Um, got an offshore rig that's working in, in East Timor waters. Uh, so we do look after that. And then we get involved in some of the Pacific Islands as well. You know, obviously some of these locations, they're really challenging markets, hard to get to, and COVID hasn't made it as easy, but uh, you know, we get involved in all those regions. We've got an office in Perth, um, Melbourne. We've got um, two warehouses in Brisbane, an office and a warehouse in Adelaide. 
And then we have a, a lot of supply bases that we look after a, a, a lot of offshore rigs. So we've got one in Melbourne Port, Darwin at the moment, Caratha, Broome. We're currently looking after four offshore rigs out of those locations. We also manage two EPC projects. We were involved with a major solar company and we do some industrial business as well through our 3PL sites. You got a lot going on over there. What what would you say is your biggest strength in that region that helps you accomplish all of these these goals? Well, well, firstly, I, I've got to say our people are our greatest strength. And um, I know that sounds a bit of a cliche, but but um, I, I really mean that. The team the team we have are really very focused and extremely hardworking. But from a business point of view, we're very strong in the energy and mining markets. We touch on the medical and the pharma industries as well. We've got 3PL facilities in, in Melbourne and, and the two we've got in Brisbane. So we look after some solar products that we distribute all over Australia and warehouse doing some piping as well, so very different. And we're currently, with a couple of our customers, looking to expand some of those 3PL sites into um, some satellite locations. So right now we're looking at one of them expanding into our Perth office as well, into our warehouse there. And with all this growing that y'all are doing, there's got to be some growing pains. What do you believe are the main challenges in that region right now? Oh, well, you know, COVID, we're seeing it all over the world that space and rates into and out of the country are really difficult right now. We're hoping that um, by 2022, we, we should see that, you know, get back to some normality. Um, we've seen rates increase sixfold, um, and, and this has made it really difficult in serving not only existing business, but our new business. Um, we've seen border closures between the states, and so it's been really difficult to move between the cities which has made it difficult, especially when you've got one city um, developing quicker than the other and we need to probably get around. But but we've been getting there and we're, we're getting through there. We're still providing excellent service and we're, we're but we're also looking to develop more local business. Um, so we're looking at our 3PLs. Uh, we're looking at our domestic transportation as well um, to extend on that, um, expand on that. And, and, and the plan is to work with our overseas sales teams to understand any opportunities that they may have um, that we can domestically expand those companies that we're doing around the world into Australia. We've had some success with this approach in the past in, in developing um, a global customers. You're working towards finding solutions, not limitations. Absolutely. Um, that's what we do every day. Speaking of every day, you've been with the company since nearly the beginning. What sets Crane apart? You know, what, What's the differentiator? Oh, it's our people. Um, you know, I've been in the industry for 32 years now. Um, I, I've never worked with a team that works so hard, hard to find solutions. Um, I continue to be amazed every day on how we always seem to find a way. When it appears there's nothing that can be done, we seem to find a solution. And why specifically should somebody seek logistic services from Crane Worldwide? Oh, I think on top of that, people, we've got ex excellent technological solutions. Um, you know, the, the ability to track and trace now is just a standard thing, but our systems are, allow us to drill down in, into the details on shipments, whether that be the customs clearance, the paperwork of the shipment, to um, getting down to the line item. And I think this really makes us um, a logistics leader. And you've hit upon three very important points, our people, our service and our technology. I think that's what really helps set us apart. Absolutely, 100%. It's wonderful to see. Peter, it's been great chatting with you today. It's been a lot of fun getting to know you and getting to learn more about your region. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Joseph. You do a great job, mate. Um, oh, I appreciate really that. enjoyed Thanks. it. Cheers. And thank you, dear listener, for tuning in. Please remember to like, share, and follow Coffee with Crane on your favorite podcast player. So until then, I'll save a nice cup for you right here on the next episode of Coffee with Crane. Goodbye now.